Hey everybody, it's Henry Steele. Today is March 5th, 2020, and in this video I want to talk to you about one of the major war cycles, or revolutionary cycles. Now, for the United States of America, this is what this video is actually going to be about, specifically for the United States. And to find this cycle, we're going to look at the birth of America. It's July 4th, 1776. And I just went with 12 p.m. because we don't need an exact specific time of day for what we're going to look at right here. Have you ever wondered why the number 69 was so important to GAN? I bet you have. If you've done any study with GAN, you know that number shows up in several places throughout his written works. And it's been attributed to things like the sign of cancer here because the glyph for the sign of cancer looks like the number 69 on its side. It also has been attributed to the law of vibration to octaves due to an octave structure where there are 69 different points at a certain level. But the main thing that he points to, believe it or not, is the position of the planet Uranus at the birth of the United States of America. It's at 69 degrees Gemini, the twins. And the thing is, the planet Uranus is the revolutionary planet. It's the major, major war planet. And the basic idea, it's very simple, is that whenever uh, the planet Uranus, which takes 84 years to go around the zodiac, it spends about seven years in each sign of the zodiac. When it makes it all the way back around to the sign where it was when whatever we're talking about was born, we can expect a revolution of some kind, or a war, or both. Because a revolution doesn't necessarily have to be a war. I mean, typically, traditionally, especially in the olden days, in quotes, it was. But it could be a political coup where there's no actual war. It could be a... Um, it could be spiritual, religious revolution. It could be an industrial type revolution. It could be something along those lines where a government system changes or a belief system changes in a major way, something like that. But what we have here is the planet Mars in the same sign with Uranus right there. And without going into in too much detail, basically because of that we can expect war the majority of the time that this planet Uranus returns to Gemini for the United States of America. Now if we go forward I'm going to go ahead and just restrict all the planets here and just stick with Uranus right there. If we go forward one year at a time here since this planet takes so long to go around the zodiac when we get back to Gemini we find that we're in the late 1850s and then right about when we're back on the same degree right there 1860 is the year that the American the United States of America entered a civil war for a very long period of time four and a half five years something like that so we once again as a nation experienced a war, an internal war, and if we go forward again another 84 years, we find that we are in, when Uranus gets back into this area of the zodiac, we're in the uh, World War II right there, which is um, the most significant war for the United States of America in the 20th century. Now, if we push time forward again, we can see that we're in 2020 right now. And the planet Uranus is getting closer and closer to Gemini right there. So we can expect somewhere in the neighborhood of 2025 to about 2028 we can expect the United States of America to be involved in some sort of revolution or war most likely it's going to be involving a war of some kind now I say that but you can take into account that war has changed somewhat um, 
I say that, but that's not actually true. It's it's fought differently now. You can actually fight it from a distance, meaning, you know, you can be like drones, for instance, are flying, and there's nobody in the drone. So, I mean, there's it's because of computers and technology, wars are fought differently now, today, than they were before, where it was just person facing person. I mean, in the Revolutionary War and even the Civil War, you literally had lines of men walking towards each other with guns shooting each other, and that's just how brutally just insane it was. I mean, think about how stupid that is. And then during World War I, the wars really started to change around that time frame. They dug trenches and things of that nature because they realized that there, it, there were smarter ways to fight, and that continued throughout the whole 20th century to the point where things are just done differently now where it's not as brutal it's still just insanely brutal I mean, war is a terrible thing that should not be but unfortunately it is so anyway I wanted to show that right here because a lot of people a lot of people actually do know about the fact that Uranus is the planet of revolution and war and that when Uranus comes back to, it's the sign of where it was when something was born, especially a nation, that it indicates war or revolution, dependent upon some other things going on in the birth chart also. But for the United States, it's basically war or revolution. And of course, Mr. W. D. Gann knew about this, and in his 1940 uh, Face Facts America uh, booklet, it really was, he actually talks about this right here. Uh, the cycle from 1940 to 1950 is one when the United States is almost sure to be involved in war or revolution. The war cycle for the United States ends in 1944 or 1945. Before we pass out of that cycle, we will face the most serious troubles that this country has ever known. We will have to pay the price for the mistakes of the past, and he goes into other stuff right there. But basically, right here, he's looking at the planet Uranus. That's not the only thing he's looking at, but that's one of the big things. Anytime you see revolution, that's essentially what's being looked at, is the planet Uranus in relationship to the birth chart of the country usually and let's see let's pull this back up right here so this is a warning to everybody that we can expect something some sort of reaction of this kind due to the fact that the planet Uranus is in fact just a few years away from getting back to its position in the zodiac when the united states of america was born so this is a u.s thing specifically now there are other cycles like the planet neptune which deals with illusions and dreams and delusions things of that nature that planet has an effect on what the war or revolution is actually going to be and if you look at it, its its cycles are approximately twice as long as the Uranus cycle. So when the United States of America was born in 1776, the word the planet Neptune was was basically influencing us in a revolutionary slash patriotic sort of way. Um, when we were at the Civil War, it was a brother against brother situation. Again, in the World War II situation, it was um, Neptune had moved back, and it was in a uh, more, in quotes, patriotic type of situation. But unfortunately, Uranus has um, come back to its war point, and Neptune is going to be in the opposite position, essentially, and it's more of a brother-against-brother brother situation. So that is the so-called flavor of what will be brought with Uranus returning back here. Now, I'm not making any prediction as to whether we actually get into a war war or a civil war or anything like that. That's not the point of this. It's just simply an informative uh, video based on the revolutionary aspect of the planet Uranus. 
Uranus is known as the planet of sudden change. It's kind of like upsets whatever's going on there in a rapid manner. And quite interestingly, if you research the planet itself, Uranus is the only planet that lays on its side. In other words, its rotation, the planet itself's rotation, is perpendicular, essentially, to all the other planets in the solar system which is I find quite interesting because if you were going to pick one of the planets to be a troublemaker so to speak and to cause upsets and differences it would make logical sense to pick the planet that is doing something different than all the other ones when it comes to its rotation at least to me it would but Anyway, I just wanted to do this video before I do the next one that I will release in a couple more days from today. But um, that's basically it for now, and I will talk to you in the next video.